Hello, very good evening, guys. I hope you all are doing good. So, today we are going to learn our fourth machine learning algorithm. And that is a decision tree. All right. So, I think uh, you must have gone through my previous uh, previous webinar session, which is all about. Uh, the first I have clear the logistic regression, uh, the linear regression, then logistic, and also we have discussed about uh, the k nearest neighbor. So I just uh, want to check whether you guys are able to hear me. Yeah, so I think we'll just wait for one more minute. I think there are a couple of other uh, viewers are keep coming. So guys, my name is Shivashish and today we are going to learn about a decision tree. Yeah, so this is the most important algorithm like, you know, which you should learn when you are learning the machine learning algorithms. So since we have already covered our three major algorithms, and we have uh, the couple of few more algorithms as well. So like, you know, random forest, ensemble learning. And also I'll take you through the uh, clustering, how we can do the clustering analysis and all such thing. Maybe probably by next class and then afterwards. Uh, all right. So like, you know, I think most of you have requested for uh, this document as well as the code. So what we will do maybe by today end of the class so we will upload all this we'll share with you all this document and also we'll upload all the um, all the uh, like the case studies and the code uh, in our github account so you can probably go and uh, go through the entire code and if you have any doubt so you can just keep comment and we'll address your uh, queries as soon as possible all right yep so we'll just quickly start our session today so decision tree like you know what is all about it and uh, what is exactly the decision tree and how it work what is the application what are what all are the error metrics and i will go a little bit uh like you know also the maths behind it and also we can quickly go through our one real time case study like how we can build our decision tree model all right so this is our today's agenda so like you know decision tree is something where uh, the the definition which is clearly stated as like tree based learning algorithm like you know one of the most uh, widely used and it is also work as in supervised learning method supervised means as i as i'm keep telling you again and again like supervise something which we have the target variable when we have target variable we have to predict something all right and this method is a very powerful for the predictive modeling. Again, we can use for the predictive modeling. We can do for uh, the classification problem as well. So it works like, you know, it perfectly like works well for both this scenario. One is for classification and the another is for the regression, right? So unlike linear model, like they map non-linear relationship quite well. Like, so we don't have to find the uh, relationship between like how one variable is linear to the another so it doesn't work like this so how it work like this i'll explain you so it is very helpful for a classification and regression for sure like you must have remember like last time we have uh, like you know mentioned one term about the cart cart right so if you can go through the previous slides the previous session slides so you you must have find about the cart so cart is basically the classification and regression trees so when we talk about the decision tree and the cut, so both are similar. So there is a no such difference between uh, these two. Yep. So types of decision tree, like, uh, so there are two types of decision tree, basically, when we have the target variable given. So one is a binary variable decision tree, which is, of course, a classification problem. Uh, like the decision tree has a binary target variable, then it's called as a binary variable decision tree. 
like for example like you know yes no or i said uh, true or false so like we can take example let's say where the target variable was student will play cricket or not right yeah and the continuous variable decision tree so which is something where we have the continuous target variable then it is called as a continuous uh, variable target like when we have the historical data when we have something and when we have to predict the future all right we'll go to the next slide yeah so here i can explain you you can see in the right hand side uh, like you know i have mentioned one visualization um so it's like or let's say like i can give you a like very layman example like how you identify whether it is a decision tree problem or not so let's say we have a problem to predict whether a customer will pay his renewal premium with an insurance company again that is a yes or no problem the like classified between two different variables so here we know that the income of customer is a significant variable because that is what we have to predict that is what we have to identify which is our target but insurance company doesn't have the income detail for all customers right so now in this scenario what we can do is we can build a decision tree model to predict customer income based on his occupation like the external factor like what are the factors which is affecting his income like maybe occupation maybe a product maybe a various other variables right like it can be anything like his age his location and like his credit score and like whether he is single or married like something like that so in this so when we have this kind of scenario so we can specifically we can say these are the predicting value of continuous variable but we, when we have the only for yes and no and like when we have the only two scenarios then it's definitely a binary classification problem yeah so it works for both so if you can see like how we can identify so uh, like you know you must have uh, like uh, learn this techniques or maybe like this thing in your elementary school but uh, here we can specify this particular problem statement as a decision tree when we form a decision and with the branches let's say this one is your root node where my target variable may be a savings like saving in terms of low saving medium and high so we have given the matrix called like asset equal to low that is a saving low saving medium credit score good and saving high where income less than equal to like around 30k dollar right so first we have split into a three different groups saving a uh, low saving medium saving high then if the saving is low then we can further divide into a two group like you know whether the, if the asset is low so it can be two consequence either a bad risk or a good risk okay and if the income is less than 30k dollar then again it can be bad risk or good risk if the credit score is medium or maybe a good if a decent enough then we don't have to split further so what exactly you interpret uh, with this idea so i'll explain you yeah so this is the very layman language but we have the more example in the next slides as well but yeah you can uh, just have a look over here like over 30 years this is suppose a root node and this is your branch node like this so first we split into a two different groups one is yes or no so when we talk about the root node means like you know where it is originated and the internal node when we have the branches all right like yes or no like a uh, if you are a 30 year old so what is your preference maybe you will get married or maybe you will buy a sports car right so if the sports car is your ultimate goal like you know after 30 so you don't have to like you know or do much so we cannot split further like we cannot split like sports car because your ultimate aim is to buy sports car but let's say your aim is supposed to once you once you get like once you hit 30 so you have to married first then after that probably Uh, like you know you can buy a car uh, like what kind of car so there is a, again the preference if you are married then maybe yes you can buy a minivan or else you can buy a sports car so when you don't split further like you know because here your condition is satisfied sports car and here also like a sports car or maybe maybe a minivan it's up to you like it can be flip also like you know it can be sports car it can be mini flip or vice versa so when you cannot split further that is something which we called as leaf node and this is something which is important so that means like you know you might have asked me like you know how further i can split so you can split your trees your decision tree until you get the leaf node 
so once you reach the leaf node then like because see like you know you have to come up with that situation where you cannot split further when you have the only value 0 and 1 then you can predict your uh, model right so in common terms like you know so there are definition here you can uh, quickly have a look first one is a root node which represent entire population or sample and which should be a homo homogeneous set like a similar kind of similar kind of like you know groups it shouldn't be a mix of like you know no, like it should be a same kind of let's say a, if you're talking about a male or maybe a like a human race so it should be a male or female it shouldn't be like you know any other variables like let's say car or, or let's say any company some like you know something like that so it, should, it shouldn't be like that it should be a same set of group which is called as homogeneous set and we can further divide into two or more homogeneous sets yeah splitting splitting yeah you can see the splitting is here it is a process of dividing a node into two or more sub nodes like uh, we have seen in this example like we split into a three different group so it is your intuition like you know what exactly the problem statement is given and uh, how many splits you have to do maybe a two maybe a three maybe a four it depends on the question and it will definitely it will uh, like you know given in every problem statement right so you don't have to uh, worry about that now the decision node so when we talk about the decision node so this is something which we talk about and this is something we have to do something when a sub node split into a further sub nodes like this is sub node and further split into different sub nodes then it is called as a decision node because this is something which you are actually trying to achieve and leave terminal node terminal means like you know the extreme end nodes do not split is called a leaf or terminal node when you reach your goal so you don't have to split further so there is a one called as like pruning this is the most important thing so pruning means like when we remove sub nodes like these all are sub nodes when you split further this process is called pruning we can say opposite process of splitting so the whole intuition and the whole idea is uh, the less number of splitting you have okay the more you can reach or you can achieve a more accuracy and how we can like see uh, the our error matrix so pruning is something which will restrict you to split further so this is just opposite as a splitting like you know you are restricting your splitting the less number of splits you have uh, so like you know suppose if you if you do not split further and if you just stop it stop it here because the tree the tree can be formed like you know uh, like the endless like it it can go like uh, you know maybe a, a two sub nodes three sub nodes or maybe four sub nodes right so the less number of sub nodes you have so you will have a more accuracy so guys i think my uh are we am i audible like, can you hear me because i have increased my volume i'm not sure whether you guys are able to hear me or not but but i think if you can put your earphone that would be perfectly fine yeah. Uh, yeah. And the branch and subtree. A uh, subsection of entire tree is called a branch or subtree. It is as the same, like you know, branches. The parent and child node. So the name itself uh, says a lot, like you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Like a node which is divided into sub nodes is called as parent node. yeah a node which is uh, subdivided into a sub node which is called as a parent node of sub node whereas sub node are the child of parent node like let's say this is the parent node and these all are the child node of this parent node this one yeah so uh, this decision tree are used for both categorical and numerical data we can become because uh, when we have the two or three different type of uh, variables uh, like a category variable it also work well if you have the continuous variable also continuous data it again works well but for the continuous variable prediction neural network regression model works best yeah this is general intuition so we will not talk about the neural network yet so we'll discuss about this neural network 
maybe in the upcoming classes so now the question is like how this uh, decision tree work like I, as i have already explained you but this is another example like you can just quickly have a look like the decision tree is a type of supervised learning algorithm having a predefined target variable like you should or you must have the target variable when you are doing the classification problem or maybe a regression problem right so in this technique we split the population or sample into two or more homogeneous which means the same same group of people or same group of population or a subpopulation based on most significant splitter so the splitter you have to decide with your own intuition and input variable so you can see the example is given here but we can have a look on the visual part here like this is the decision tree this is the gender let's say this gender like let's say male or female this is the root node and this is supposed to be your branch node and you can further split into a tall medium or short again like short medium or tall and when you cannot split further this is the leaf node so this is the general because the tree forms like this right when you have the root node it further split into branches so we can take an example here like let's say we have a sample of 30 students with three variables three different variable one is a boy and girl and one is a class 9th and 10th and their height 5 to 6 feet so 15 out of these 30 pe uh, 30 people who play a cricket in their leisure time now we want to create a model to predict who will play cricket during their leisure time it can be mix of boys and girls right out of this 15 people those who are playing cricket right and 30 is our large size population and 15 out of those 15 people are playing cricket so it can be mixed both a girl and boy and like you know they can be study in a class 9th or 10th their height will vary in between 5 or 6 so how do we identify so that is when like this kind of problem statement uh, we specifically use the decision tree model so in this problem we need to segregate students who play cricket in their leisure time based on highly significant input variable among all three so this is where decision tree helps it will segregate the student based on all values of three variable and identify the variable which creates the best homogeneous set of students which are heterogeneous to each other so as i told you like you know maybe the population is same but their qualities their features and their preferences their interest could be vary they can like you know study in a class 9th or 10 class could be and height could be like 5 or 6 feet it can be boy or girl that is when we call the heterogeneous group yeah so that is what like you know which is explained here so when we uh, like you know go through our code so it will it will give you the more sense like you know what we are trying to achieve here but for this for the layman language and for the basic understanding so this is i think sufficient enough so there's a no such it is very easy easy algorithm like you know you don't have to do a lot of things here like the advantages of this uh, decision tree are uh, like you know the output is very easy to understand even for the people from non analytical background of course because uh, for that you don't have you have, don't have to record any like you know statistical knowledge it's just the basic intuition right and yeah useful for data exploration why because uh, it is the fastest way to identify most significant variable and the relationship between two or more variable and it implicitly perform variable screening or future selection like uh, like with even though like you know without the help of machine you can clearly identify you can clearly like split into a two or three different groups and it is relatively like you know it requires a little effort from user toward for data preparation like we don't have to do a lot of data preparation like you know finding the null values feature engineering data exploration maybe visualization so the data cleaning is a uh, very less here and the data, data type is not a constraint here because as i told you it can handle both numerical and categorical and non-parametric method so non-parametric method means when when we have the no assumption like you know the, in our previous uh, algorithms when we talk about the linear regression when we talk about the logistic or maybe knn so mostly in all these three algorithm we have some assumptions 
and we have to keep in mind like how we can how we can approach you cannot approach like you know blindly so you have to go through the assumptions first whether it is a sinusoidal or whether we have, whether we are doing the residual analysis in like like in a for instance uh, in the linear regression so but in here like you don't have to like you know do any assumption and there is a no such linear relationship also yeah but what are the disadvantage so not fit for continuous variable so that means like you know even though it is fit for the regression problem but for the classification it performs really well yeah and the decision tree can be unstable because small variation in the data might result in a completely different tree being generated right so if we, if you have the a large data then like you know it makes more sense it will give you the more idea how to split and what you are trying to achieve we'll see like how and the information gain in a decision tree with categorical variable gives a biased response for attribute with greater number of category so we we'll learn about the two metrics here one is the information gain and one is the gini index so gini index and the information gain are the two variable where we can identify like you know where and when we have to stop our splitting so we'll just talk about a little bit maths about it like how does a tree decide where to split so like you know our decision of making strategic splits heavily affected our tree accuracy like because this two different criteria regression classification are there and the decision tree use multiple algorithm to decide to a split a node into or more sub nodes the creation of sub node increase the homogeneity of resultant sub nodes right so this is just a theory part you can just have a, a look on it so yeah this is what i was talking about like a, a gini index so gini index is something when we have to select a two item from population at random then they just must be a same class which is a like you know as i told you the heterogeneous group and the probability for this one if population is pure right like it works with categorical target variable like a success or failure yes or no it performs only binary split and higher the value of gini higher the homogeneity and cart classification and regression tree and now how we calculate so to calculate a gini index for sub nodes like you can use a formula sum of square of probability for success and failure so success which is a p square and 1 minus p square which is a q square so you can sum of these two and calculate gini gini index for split using weighted gini score of each node of that split so the terminology behind it like you know what what we can uh, what we are trying to achieve and how we can approach it so gini index is, is something gini index is something where we actually trying to find out like their splitting their splitting behavior but again how to restrict it so the pruning is help to overfitting like you know when you have the lot of nodes and you are just keep on splitting so the pruning will help you to avoid the overfitting problem it reduce the size of decision tree by removing section of the tree that provide little power to classifying instance right like in your data if you have the lot of noise and the lot of outlier so you should aim for like you know how less number of tree you are trying to form the less number of tree the less number of branches you form uh, you will attain a more accuracy yeah and pre pruning method significance testing it refers to the process in which we stop growing the tree that is what we are talking about when we stop growing the tree and when there is a no statistical significant association between any attribute and the class at node yeah so it is again like you know mention the same thing number of leaves in the tree that is the size of the tree and error rate of the tree misclassification rate or sum of squared error so if we can uh, like have a look on the split method like gini index measure impurity in node it varies between 0 and 1 minus 1 by n that is a pr probability of 1 minus 1 by n that means your pr which is q 
like p square and q square which is we just have a look where n is a number of category in the dependent variable and q is a and 1 minus n which is a your independent variable so this is the general formula like 1 minus sum of i equal to 1 c and p i square like p is your like you know the number of success and 1 minus 1 minus all the summation like how many number of trees you have so the important point here like if you have a zero if it is comes as a zero then because the less number of uh, branches you have i told you you will have the more accuracy suppose like if you split in a very initial initial stage so in that case like you know uh, the gain index will be zero and it implies as a perfect classification or maybe a 1 minus 1 by number of classes implies worse classification. The more number of classes you have, so that means it is affecting your accuracy. And we want a variable split having a low Gini index. The low Gini index you have, like let's say if you have a 0 or maybe a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.10, so that means like you have the, you're doing a good job. For binary dependent variable, maximum gain index value can be 0 0.5. Yeah. So if you are doing your binary classification problem, so it shouldn't be more than 0 0.5. So if it is 0 0.5, that means you are doing a good job. And your and your and your model has perfectly fit. Your model is doing a uh, you're performing really well. So if you can quickly have the calculation, let's say one and the number of classes, which is two. 1 minus 1 by 2 and if you can put in this formula so you will achieve this 0 0.5 like you can just do a little bit of maths and calculation so this is 1 minus 1 by 2 square 1 minus 1 by 2 square right so this is this formula we are talking about this one and if you can put it here so you will find 0 0.5 so that means in your classification problem, your guinea, your guinea index is still performing well. Yeah, so this is the one term, guinea index, and the second one is entropy, which we also call as information gain. So this is the another splitting criteria, which is specifically we use for classification problem. And the formula is given here. So you can see, like, you know, we just have introduced here the logarithm, where so you just have to like you know by heart with this two formula one is the formula this formula and the other one is this one this for entropy and information gain where i equal to one and c like c is your like it can be like one two three or ten classes or like a 20 classes whatever it is pi logarithm two and pi it favors partition that help that have a small count but many distinct values the smaller value of entropy signifies a good classification right so what does this mean then again like you know it's just the same as the guinea index the less entropy you achieve like you know you can just put a formula here like you can put a values over here like let's say five or let's say one or one cross logarithm two and one so whatever the formula you get and the less the values you get like a point one point two point three if you are if you are like you know if you achieve a zero that means again like you know like your model has perfectly classified but if you do not get the zero or maybe a one maybe point one point two point three that also means your model is still doing good but it shouldn't be more than point five so that is what like you know which is explained here like smaller value of entropy signifies a good classification problem now uh, you must have talked about like you know which is better and which is good and when and what we have to do with these two and like when we have to approach uh green index when we have to approach entropy so i would say so when you have the problem statement when you build your model when you have to find your entropy or maybe a green index so you should perform both right because until unless you don't like you know perform both so you won't, you won't get the idea like which one is performing well which one is a good so this is something uh, which is similar to the error matrix like entropy or guinea both splitting criteria are approximately similar and produces similar result in 95 percent of the cases but sometimes like guinea index performs really well 
comparatively like you know faster than entropy because it doesn't require a calculation of log because when you do the log so the value can be changed exponentially because the logarithm itself means it will like you know just multiply your values right so it and or sometimes maybe it reduces your values yeah but if you don't do any kind of logarithm if you just use the simple formula then there is a high possibility you reach a uh, maximum efficiency yeah so guys that's all about the theoretical concept behind the decentry because this is the most important and uh, like you know there is no such hard and fast rule for this uh, particular alg algorithm and we can quickly have a look on the code here just give me a moment So guys, I believe you must have able to see my Jupyter notebook. Weather data classification using scikit-learn, which we also call as sklearn. Okay, so before going this uh, problem statement, let me take you through the Excel sheet, the data. Okay, let me just read this problem statement first. So can you just uh, like, you know, uh, let me know whether you are able to see my screen or not. Yep, I think it, it is, you can able to see my Jupyter notebook, right? Yeah, so weather data classification using scikit-learn. So here we have the data given, like the daily weather data description. So the data comes from a weather station located in San Diego, California. The weather station is equipped with the sensor the capture weather related measurement such as air temperature, air pressure and relative humidity. So these three are the external factor. So which we just like you know deep dive into this three uh, features and data was collected for a period of three years which is from September uh, to uh, 2011 to 2014 to ensure that sufficient data for different season and weather condition is captured so I'll just quickly like you know take you have a look over the excel sheet just give me a moment yep so here you go so this is our excel sheet which is look like something like that like where we have the uh, around how many variables i would say Like you have the multiple variables like you know air temperature, average wind directives, and like something like this. And we have the target variable is also given here, which is the relative humidity underscore three pm. This one. So since we don't have the target variable given here actually, because this is a classification problem, so we have this a relative term here. 
we have the lot lot of the uh, external factors and the features which we have given and we have to classify our problem accordingly yeah so how how we approach like uh, this kind of problem so i'll i'll let you know i'll just tell you in the code section yeah Uh, so here like you know again importing the necessary libraries which we always are do in our first step so whatever the important uh, libraries which we specifically use in a python so here like again import pandas as pd so i am just keep telling you like you know so here like i haven't mentioned the numpy but yeah because we are just dealing with the categorical uh, variables but yeah if you want you can also import as a numpy as pd np and pandas as pd and import os that is for operating system yeah so this is my data look like like a pd dot feed csv and i'm just reading my data here over here so you can see there are these number of features number air pressure 9 am air temperature 9 am wind and so on so we can find the data columns over here so these are all the columns and we can quickly have a look over the shape which is like uh, we have 1095 rows and 11 columns on the data information and you, so according to your intuition like you can just have a look over here the more, no, more number of uh, like you know the data cleaning you do so you will reach a better accuracy data dot information data dot tail like uh, like you know you, you must have remember like you know we have done this data dot head so head means like it will give you the first 10 rows first nine rows and when we talk about the data dot tail it will give you the last uh, last 10 rows maybe last nine rows yeah so it like because it has the 1095 rows it will give you like 1094 93 92 91 and 90 like the first one two three four five six six different rows so we'll we can check here the data dot is null dot any x is equal to one x is equal to one which is for your column so we are trying to find the null values over here and at the same time we are also doing the head so you can do this part in a two different uh, I don't, i'm not sure whether where is my cursor okay no problem yeah so you can perform this two task in the two different cell but since i have mentioned these two things in our one cell data dot is n a is null dot any x is equal to one dot head so in this particular section you can see we are finding the null values in our column as well as we are like giving the command to show the head yeah so you can see in this air temp like in this third section here there are few null values which we can clearly see 
in a a10 underscore a temperature underscore 9 am and the max wind direction underscore 9 am there are a couple of null values over here so what we can do is we can clean our data so see uh, like you must have uh, like you know aware when we approach in our last statement in our last class so when we have the null values when we have the lot of null values so we specifically drop that particular column but if we have the less null values in the categorical problem we import the median or maybe mode but in a numerical variable we should import the mean values but here like you know the less number of data we have it makes a more relevance to building a model so that means what we can do is we can just abruptly we can just drop our rows not columns suppose if in your row if you have two three so it is just the intuition and it is just the like just just the approach maybe you can just try like in a, another way but what i have done is in my row section like i haven't dropped my column i just have whatever the null values i have in my rows that is around the because i have the 11 columns so i specifically drop it particular row so i am eliminating my rows instead of my column because my column give the more sense when i am building a decision tree classification problem correct so delete unique values in data set data cleaning process number column contain unique values which cannot help us making any decision like delete data number what does this mean like yeah so i am just checking here like in my total rows which i have around 1095 rows so data dot shape index 0 in the uh, like in the index 0 like till my in the last row i have around 1095 rows this many rows i have and what i have told you i have told you like if i have a null values and like if i have a look in my columns in my columns i must have the few null values but what i am trying to do i am eliminating i am dropping my rows instead of columns so this also you can also do so when we do the classification problem so we specifically approach this kind of technique so removing the rows which contain the null value data equal to data dot drop na right so this is the command which i have given like wherever i have any just drop that particular data means just drop that particular row I just give me a moment because I think my cursor is not moving. हाँ हाँ कोड रन करना है 
बट आई थिंक कोर्ट की वजह से नहीं हुआ मेरा वो कर्सर के गायब हो गया तो कोई शॉर्टकट है क्या उसको करने के लिए बिकॉज़ मेरे शॉर्टकट की काम नहीं कर रहे हैं और कर्सर काम नहीं कर रहा है दोनों ब्लॉक हो गया हां मेरा फिर वो एक्सेस कर सकते हो क्या ये सेशन एंड करके चालू करोगे फिर से तुम सेशन एंड कर दो तो मैं दोबारा चालू करूंगा ऐसे करोगे मैं हेलो हाँ विनायक हेलो हाँ ऑथेंटिकेशन फेल हो गया हेलो ये ये दिखा रहा है अकाउंट वेरिफिकेशन क्या बोल रहा है यूट्यूब नहीं चल रहा है यूट्यूब हेलो हेलो अकाउंट वेरिफिकेशन फेल हो गया दिखा रहा है हाउ शुड वी डिलीवर द वेरिफिकेशन कोड टू यू वो लिंक नहीं ओपन हो रहा है नहीं नहीं यूट्यूब यूट्यूब अभी कैंसिल हो गया अभी यूट्यूब में नहीं हो सकता अभी तुमको वहां से क्रिएट करना पड़ेगा हाँ वो खत्म हो गया उस, ओके उसमें लिखा आ रहा है अकाउंट वेरीफिकेशन स्टेप वन एंड टू हाउ शुड वी डिलीवर द वेरीफिकेशन कोड टू यू वो श्वेता के पास जाता है ना क्योंकि मेरे को एन एल पी का पेज नहीं दिखा रहा यूट्यूब में नहीं नहीं दिखा रहा स्विच अकाउंट क्या होता है एड अकाउंट करना पड़ता है ना हाँ वो अकाउंट पे तो करना है बट मैंने एक सेकंड में दोबारा चेक कर ले रहा हूँ 
स्विच अकाउंट किया डिजेंट्रे दिखाना दिखा रहा है एक मिनट यूट्यूब स्टूडियो में जाता हूँ वीडियो में जाके लाइव स्ट्रीम करता हूँ देखता हूँ कि दिखा रहा है कि नहीं हर दिन कुछ ना कुछ ना कुछ होता ही रहता है सला लाइव स्ट्रीम में आ गया हूँ ठीक है एक्सीडेंट कनेक्शन चार व्यूअर हैं ऑलरेडी की 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 कॉपी करो क्या दोबारा से बनाऊं एंड एंड स्ट्रीम एक्टिवेट हुआ है नहीं तो स्ट्रीम चालू नहीं कर सकते ना क्योंकि एंड स्ट्रीम हो गया तो गो लाइव नहीं आ रहा है एंड स्ट्रीम हाँ ओके बट स्क्रीन नहीं शो हो रहा है ओके हेलो गाइस आई एम रियली सॉरी फॉर द इनकनवीनियंस बिकॉज लाइक यू नो व्हेन यू रन द कोड सो दिस काइंड ऑफ एब्रोड सिचुएशन विल ऑलवेज अकर so because we are building a decent tree model so my system got completely hang and i had to shut down so just let me know am i audible just let me know quickly am i audible so guys if you can just quickly tell me whether i am audible or not i'll just start the session uh just gives me a heads up whether you can hear me or not
okay all right guys uh, so we'll not waste our time we'll just quickly continue so here i was telling you about the delete missing values so uh, what you should keep in mind so when you have the lot of uh, null values in your uh, column so in, here what we are like trying to do so let's say we have we have the few columns which has the few null values so we specifically we delete that particular rows like you know the row wise instead of like the column so because our columns here we need the maximum attributes the maximum features which will help us to make a meaningful sense to build our model so here like you know what i have mentioned here removing the rows which contain the null values data equal to data dot drop any calculating the amount of data or say number of rows in the data set after removing the rows contain null values in the total number of rows we have we can just run the code okay it is throwing error so because we have to start our code once again just be with me for a moment so like i would preferably say when you uh, when you have the code when you are running a code so you should specifically run your code on google collab because it takes your computational power and is your new system get hang sometime but if you are using a google collab so like you know because it has the cloud space so this kind of problem will not disturb you So we have the rows around one zero six four here. These are our total rows. So what uh, command we are like you know giving here? Like calculate how many rows are deleted which contain the null values. Like before rows, minus after rows. Like how many columns, how many rows we have previously, and minus after rows. So if you do this, you will get thirty one rows. And how you get thirty one? Like the total number of rows that you have around one zero nine five. Uh, after removing few rows which has the null value you have around 1064 if you minus 1095 minus 1064 you will get somewhere around 31 so 31 rows we have deleted out of 1095 rows all right and this is just a basic feature engineering which we are doing because we are just cleaning our data so but as i told you in decision tree you don't have to do much you don't have to clean your lot of data because the more uh, specific data you have so you can it will be easy to build your model now create categorical response variable so i will uh, i want you to like you know have a look at this data it's, if you can have a look at this data this is the relative underscore humidity underscore 3 pm so if you can see in this data which is around 51.19 percent humidity 29 percent 46 16 54 like so on and it it can be many so what we will do is what we are trying to do here 
so it is see it is just your your intuition like you know what you uh, do with the data so what i have done like filter the values which contain more than 24.9 relative humidity at 3 pm so at 3 pm whatever the data i have which is around 24.99 relative humidity i want those data here we put a new column like clean data underscore data dot copy clean data high humidity level this is the R column clean data relative humidity pm greater than 24.99 multiply by 1 and we are also like you know seeing the head count if you run this code yeah this is our index 0 1 2 3 4 and this is our 1 and 1 so that means these two we have we get the data only which we have the more than 24 percent humidity if you can see if you can again have a look like in the first four data see 51 which is more than uh what do you say more than 24 and here okay it doesn't make sense what i'll do is i will just show you this data just for a second so if you can have a look like the first one here which is the index one which is 36.16 yeah so 36.16 which is r1 so that means relative humidity which is greater than 24 which is 36 index 1 this is 0 this is again 0 this is again 0 this is 1 then again this is 1 then 0 then this is 1 like whichever is more than 24 percent humidity so we just mentioned it as 1 because it's a classification problem so 0 and 1 right yep So we can again go back to our code. Yeah. So checking is there exist null values in the data set or not? No, not this one. This one, yeah. So now like clean data high humidity level dot value underscore count. So I think you must be able to uh, see my screen right now. like so if i run this code so around more than 24 24 percent humidity we have around 529 data like 529 rows and we have around 535 which has less than 24 counts so now we can pass a one more argument called y equal to clean underscore data high humidity label dot copy So again, like, you know, uh, we can uh, create a table and we can have a look over here. So these are all the data, like, you know, if we check the index, the 36, which is greater than 24, 76, which is greater than 24. So this is assigned as a one and the rest is zero. Now what we can do is, so we can segregate the two different terms. One is use 9 am sensor signal as features to predict humidity at 3 pm so we have one morning data and we have one humidity data after 3 pm so storing all the morning features other than humidity at 3 pm in the morning feature except this humidity because this is the only feature we have which is after 3 pm and the rest all the features we have that is the morning features so we can specify are all the morning features which is air pressure 
air temperature, average wind direction and all such things. So copying the values from the clean data set to view data set X which only consists of the morning feature data. So I am taking my new argument and I am passing this argument as a morning features. So if I run this code, so I will get all this. Uh, I will get all this morning features. Correct. And my and my and my x column has are all the morning features, and my y dot column has only high humidity level, which is after three pm, and these all are around nine am, because these are the two external factor which is affecting my weather data classification problem. Now what we can do, we just perform a test and train split. Again, like I think I have told you, x train x test, y train y test. So we can split into 70, 30. Random state, which is a code reprodu reproducibility. So you can mention any number here as you wish. Now we have to fit the fit our train set. Train because whenever we are trying to fit our data, so we have to perform in a train data set. So we have made a classifier for making a decision tree and to train the data using the classifier. Humidity classifier equal to decision tree classifier. Max leaf node equal to 10. So that means like you know, here you have to mention, hyper, this is a hyperparameter. Leaf node I, t I told you right, like you know, how much your tree, how much you want your tree should be split. So I mentioned here like you know, my tree should be split in 10 times. It can be split into 5 times or maybe 15 times according to your understanding or your intuition so i mentioned here 10 times and random state equal to zero random state is just something you have to just put for your uh, reproducibility so if i mentioned and uh, like max leaf so uh, and now you must have asked like you know how you have decided this max leaf node 10 so maybe you can just try first with the 10 then again you can go back to your code if you are not getting a good accuracy then you can mention maybe a 8 or maybe a 10 it's up to you so humidity dot classifier dot fit now you have to fit your model in x train and y train yeah then type humidity classifier which type so this is definitely a categorical type a classes recent tree predict on test data as i told you always you have to train your you have to fit your model on a train data and you have to predict your model on a test data because we have split into train and test so now we can predict our model so using humidity classifier this is our target we are assuming we have predict the value of x text and stored it to a y predict i think last time one uh, someone has asked me like you know what what do you mean by predict and and uh, like uh, of it so what we are doing here y predict equal to humidity underscore classifier dot predict x test so we like we have the predicted the y y value for the x test and stored it on y predict like we are passing we are passing the text x underscore text on a prediction on classifier humidity underscore classifier dot predict and we are storing in into a y predict so this is how like this is just a generic uh, like a one liner code which you always use whenever you are like you know predicting your data so now here y underscore predicted 0 to 10 so it will give you the nine different rows the nine so that what does this mean like you know this means like i'm splitting my decision tree in a nine different uh, branches like a 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 0, 0. You can again check here. Like 4, 65, 8, 6. So these all are 6, 9, 3. These, whatever the one you have, that means greater than 25% humidity level. And now as I told you, like, you know, uh, we have the measure term called accuracy. Measure accuracy of the classifier. Checking our accuracy of the model using accuracy score. So when you find the accuracy score, there's a difference between the accuracy for accuracy we specifically use our confusion matrix here also you can use your confusion matrix and find your accuracy if you want to uh, like you know have a look of the schema like how it is look like but when i'm trying to find the accuracy score so i have to specifically use accuracy underscore score 
Y test vibrated multiplied by hundred. Like out of hundred, how much accuracy you get? So let's see. Around ninety percent, which is pretty decent enough. So I have also explained you about the information gain and the uh, Gini index. So I want you to try like you know after this code the how you can find the information gain and the Gini index like uh, like you know because you have to split you have to reduce your splitting of uh, branches right which is called as pruning so yeah so this is the small data set so you can just go through this code once again and if you don't understand uh, just let me know you can ask me over the comment section and we'll upload all this code today's code and the previous code in our github account so you can take a reference from there so if you have any questions you can just ask me quickly because I think uh, many of you has already left because of uh, the disturbance in between yeah all right then if you don't have any question I am signing off now so guys it was a really good session with you so just go through the code and just let me know all right thank you so much have a good evening. Bye-bye.